and welcome to <laughs> Flappity Flap Podcast with your hosts, Saren and Brandon. Saren and Brandon. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Saren and Brandon. Saren and Brandon. Mm-hmm. Today's uh, topic is, what was it? What was today's You know topic? what it is. Come Addiction? On. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to let you host this. So you be the host. Uh-oh. And, uh, you know, you uh, lead and I'll follow. Oh, shit. Interview. You can interview me like I'm, you know. Okay. So um, what are, what were your experiences with addiction oh, growing? Lay down. Lay down. Let's try again. <clears throat> <laughs> is dog going to be. down for the moment. Is dog going to be a problem here? Possibly. Only time will tell. It's hot. He's making so it's many hot sounds. In this room. <laughs> He's making so many sounds. I'll just edit over them there. out like I edit our sounds out. All the pops, clicks, and he should be fine. I think he just wanted to come to the hard floor, not his bed or his crate, because it's hot. Is it going to be picking up his weird mouth sounds that he's doing? I'll give him an apple. Should I give him an apple? I don't know. No, I think he's fine. I think he's settled. Okay. Let's move on. Yeah. Get that ragey let's, look off your face. <laughs> let's move on. So what are what are, what are your experiences with addiction growing up? Growing up? Yeah, growing up well, like what were your started at the age of five when I was introduced to crack. No, not I That's a I funny joke. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, but I don't know. It was just funny the way you all right. Anyway, yeah, I know. I just, I, I just I meant know. like. Hey, stop bumping my knee. Very unprofessional. There's not a lot of space under this table. That's ridiculous. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I, um, my dad's side of the family. Were you gonna say something else? No. Okay, my dad's side of the family had a lot of problems with addiction. We were always told uh, his dad died when he was fairly young. His dad died when he was like 14. Your and dad's dad. My dad's, sorry, yeah, my dad's dad died when he was like 14. And it was kind of understood that he died from alcohol, you know, ultimately from, you know, issues related to alcohol. Um, and his mom, I think, was similarly addicted. And um, I think she had like smoking issues as well, because I think she had some kind of throat or mouth surgery at some point from cancer because like oh. she talked very, um, she had like a weird, you know, she couldn't enunciate. I, I don't remember. I just remember like um, not being able to understand what she was saying. And the adults could understand. Um, oh, man. And, yeah. Did she talk through um, <laughs> no. her, what is that called? The throat uh, hole. Yeah, no, she didn't have a throat hole. But My... I think it was a mouth thing. Like they took out, like had to take out portions of her mouth or something. Oh, man. Or or throat. Um, And it, her, it was very kind of like, like a little bit of a gargly sound and just like um oh she gosh couldn't, she i don't know i never really asked about it i still haven't wanted to like kind of ask really about after it after all these years i think it was just or i was told and i would forget and just um i wasn't as familiar and comfortable with that side of the family like i was with my mom so we saw like all the time but wouldn't your mom know like do you think you could yeah, ask her yeah I, I don't know today? like maybe it's i don't want to say it's a lack of interest but I could ask her, uh, but yeah, I just, I just know that she had some kind of surgery related to that. And, um, and then all of the kids basically, uh, my dad included have had, um, alcohol and other substance abuse issues. A couple of them are very high functioning alcohol use. And then, um, a couple of them, not so much. Um, I don't really want to you know, super go into that because it's not really about yeah. them. But but basically, um, when I was growing up, you know, my mom was very afraid of us falling into that. Falling into know, alcoholism. Using alcohol and just like she was warning us like, you know, it's genetic. And I, I think she kind of thought like alcoholism was genetic and really it was more like Is maybe it a addiction. genetic thing? I'm sure there's like... Are you like, more sub- susceptible to it if you are um, from that... I or you know think better. that what they call like hereditary 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 mm. addiction or 
alcoholism or whatever. I mean, I think it's more, at least for me, um, yeah, I guess I don't, it, I don't I know. guess it can be passed on. Like there are crack babies that they yeah. come out addicted. I think that's different because you have through the bloodstream yeah. and through your uterus. But alcohol and... runs through the bloodstream. I wonder if it, although it would have to be your mom drinking during pregnancy. Yeah, and that probably happened uh, <clears throat> sometimes, but not, I, I think she was fairly well behaved by the time she got pregnant with me because they were partiers, but I, I don't know the science. And I don't really want to speculate on it. And it might be that, you know, because I know like Native Americans are susceptible to like some people call it like an allergy, but there's like um, an addiction, you know, um, not prevalence. What am I trying to say? Uh, tendency. But I think for what my family dealt with is um, and what I've just seen in my own life is being like a highly sensitive, you know, really at heart introverted type of person, even though I can be very outgoing you know, I've, I've kind of modeled my myself after my mom in that way, but really at heart, I'm like an introvert and I'm, or just sensitive. And then feeling like that was not okay. Um, I leaned, started leaning on things. Like when I was in high school, I went through a lot of stress, you know, doing all the AP classes and I, I wasn't even that as intense as a lot of kids, but I found it very demanding and emotionally there was a lot of upheaval in our household and moving around and divorce and, you know, then breakups with my mom and her, uh, you know, one of her partners and we moved around and, um, like I started leaning on caffeine. I was just telling you how I didn't really like coffee. You know, it's an acquired taste. I and, bumped um, my mic. That's okay. Um, but, but I made myself like it because I felt like I needed it to like stay awake. And really I think I was like stressed, but I, and then I found this thing that could make me feel like more, like I was keeping up with everyone, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of then, faking it. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of kind of maybe being supported and, and figuring out what I wanted to do to kind of make myself feel okay as myself. I think, unfortunately, that's a big part of growing up though. A lot yeah. of people, I think a lot of people deal with that. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not right with who I am. I'm not, you know, who I naturally am is not okay to be because I'm shy or I, you know, I don't care to socialize or whatever. Yeah, awkward in social situations or... Mm -hmm. And we're all trying to like fit. We're all different shapes trying to fit into this square shaped peg hole mm -hmm. and it just doesn't work. So we turn yeah. to substances like coffee or alcohol or whatever. Or harder stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, um, you know, want to be clear, this isn't like a woe is me or... It was yeah. just like some observations that I was making and then Brandon and I were discussing. I've never been into any really hard stuff, but, you know, I think I like avoided alcohol because I was scared, you know, to go down that road and be dependent and have it kind of ruin my life. Because you knew about it. You had that experience growing up and yeah. had seen it. Yeah. I think it's a little easier to avoid then. Yeah. If but, you know. But what people don't know, like my mom didn't know... And like, it's not her fault. She's just not, she's not built like me. You know, she's very different. Um, I mean, maybe, or she was brought up to be, you know, she's very type A. Um, and so she didn't kind of know. And, and my dad wasn't equipped. You know, he was fighting his own demons and his own process and, and trying to figure out who he was in the process of raising little beings, you know, mm -hmm. little and beans, little beans. <laughs> and he didn't know to say, it's not just about alcohol. Like, you know, I think they thought it was just the alcohol and it was, it was addiction in general. It was, um, you know, whatever, whatever you have at hand. So I avoided alcohol and fell into, it was whatever, wait, 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 back up. It was whatever for what? It's whatever is there for you that is just there as your crutch your little you think it's your friend it's it gets you through the day whether it's coffee oh okay if you're if yeah. you're an addictive type of personality or an introverted type of person who's trying to fit you know if you're a, a square peg fitting into a round hole or whatever mm -hmm. um it's whatever's there so what was there for me because i was so studiously avoiding alcohol was um coffee sugar yeah flour you know um those kind of foods, you know, we call, I was in a 12 step program for food called food addicts and recovery anonymous. 
not as quote unquote glamorous as some of the addictions you can have, you know, cause you just picture a bunch of fat people in a room going, I, I, I eat cookies nonstop. You know what I mean? But, um, it wasn't like that actually you go into the room and there's a load of skinny people because they've been in it for a long time, but there are, you know, it's not super, it's kind of shameful or kind of embarrassing, but it was really enlightening. And, um, you know, what happened to me in avoiding alcohol was I went to those things. I would consider um, yourself lucky that you didn't fall into something. Yeah. You yeah. Know, more life. I just fell into something that was more very functional. And that's what a lot of people in that program did is they were very high functioning, but not as high functioning as they could have been without that addiction. Yeah. Um, and what, what, what solidified that theory of mine was that I avoided alcohol and fell into something else was that a lot of people from AA came over to FA because in AA they'd all be avoiding alcohol, but they'd have coffee and cookies at their meetings. So oh, you just man. had a bunch of people coming off of alcohol and yeah, they were working this really great program, but they were also, the tendency is to look for that next thing. Mm -hmm. Like you just... You Especially if you've it. been doing it for years, mm -hmm. you're not used to feeling all those emotions. They're raw. You're just, you're like a peeled, you're like a peeled Orange. version of yourself. <laughs> yeah. You're just like an exposed oh. nerve and you still have to like go to your job, you know? So, so when I joined FA, you get, uh, abstinent, they call it. You have three meals a day. Um, and, and if you're interested in the program, you should definitely just look it up. You can look up meetings. And they say, you you, you know, um, FA and what's it, what is it? Food Addicts and Recovery Anonymous. Yeah. Um, and they go, they follow the AA big book and they follow and AA a bunch is, of other. Of course, is Alcoholics Anonymous. Right. Anonymous. <laughs> 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 so, uh, you know, don't take what I'm saying is like, oh, this is the program, like I'm going to follow it. But just to give you an idea, and it seems very strict to people who don't understand like the struggle of, you know, being addicted to flour and sugar is you need this structure. And because you can't quit it, you can't quit food like you can quit alcohol or a lot of other substances. You need this like hardcore structure because you still have to eat, but you have to be watched. Yeah. Like, and um, it's, it's, I get why it's more difficult too, because food, well, not, maybe not necessarily more difficult, but you're more exposed to it all day, every day. Yeah. Like if you come into work and, oh, there's a box of donuts. Yeah. Oh, there's like pastries. Yeah. Oh, they don't leave, they home, don't leave like six packs of beer on the table in the kitchen at work. And exactly. Like, Everyone yeah. help yourself. I had extra beer from my party. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then again, alcohol, <laughs> uh, alcoholics, you know, they'll go to like a quickie mart and, yeah. and see all the booze everywhere and be like, yeah, oh, I can buy this little, you know, this, this little bottle and just keep it in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm definitely not saying like one is better or easier. It, there was just the challenge of there's more exposure. You I think. have to eat, yeah. you have to eat and drink. And then, yeah. and you have years of like eating and drinking stuff. And then suddenly it's so pared down to like two huge salads a day, well, huge, two big salads a day and like a kind of small breakfast and that's it. And then ideally, like some people will drink like herbal teas or decaf coffee. But for me, it was so hard to get off the coffee because that was like my remaining thing. I was like, man, I don't have sugar. I don't have flour, coffee. And then I would try to give up, give it up. And it was like, I would drink decaf and then I'd want calf. It was like, Everything was like a gateway, you know, like if you eat too much fruit or too, or too high sugars of fr too high sugary fruits, like it makes you want more sugar. <clears throat> um, so coffee is hard to quit if you are like a working active person, yeah. especially if you're like a typically low, low energy chill person. Yeah. It's like, cause I need this, I need this coffee to, to like keep up with yeah. everyone else or to keep up with my stupid busy day. I think it's it's to help you keep up maybe in um in a sphere that you don't really belong in. Like I yeah, it's really absolutely. making me realize like the time that I really struggle with wanting caffeine or wanting like bad food is during my work week. Like this weekend I've been pretty much fine. I've had like I'll have a green tea in the morning. And then I'll have like a half a cup of like third calf coffee. Like I mm -hmm. make it like a scoop of calf and two scoops of um, decaf in the French press. Well, yeah, you don't need and it then, in your normal life yeah. because you're not like expected to hustle. But then know? what I'm thinking is some people are fine without it. Some people are fine and they're just like, go, go, go. And that's how they are. 
Um, I don't but, understand that. <laughs> but for me, it's like, this is my, this should be my life. Not necessarily like sitting on the couch for hours, like playing video games, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we went out to the coast today. We had a walk, we went out on the beach, we were somewhat active and then, oh, we went to the dump, like, and then we came home and we lounged, but it was just chill. Mm -hmm. And that like, to me, like, that's, that's what my life should be. That's what I should, I should have been aiming for all along and doing something creative as a vocation instead of trying to fit myself into this quote unquote comfortable, but not really comfortable job of being a paralegal, which is very conflict driven. You know, you always have in my area of litigation, you always have conflicting parties that's very adversarial. And yeah, then, I think in and law in general, and <laughs> law in general, you're dealing with that, right? Yeah. I mean, you can have like <laughs> transactional, which is less, but still sometimes you come up against stuff, but you know, it's just, um, so I definitely, that's when like, as soon as I kind of sit down in that mode and I'm like, I'm here to do this job. I think it's just not what I was meant to do. It's not what my personality is geared towards. And that's when I really look for those, like, okay, I need a cup of coffee in my hand. Like I almost literally just need that cup in my hand. Cause it's my little friend, my little security blanket. Yeah. And there was a lady who worked at our office who everywhere she went around the office, she had a Starbucks cup in her hand. She always carried her Starbucks cup and it was like her little security blanket. Probably because more people than you might think are not built for the yeah. lives they're living. Yeah. But, but, um, but yeah. we gotta, you know, it's the rat race. We gotta, we gotta make our overlords wealthy, you know? <laughs> well, but I mean, yeah, it is hard. I mean, you've been trying to do it with the art and it's been like years, mm -hmm. but also a lot of times you don't recognize what's happening in your life. You don't recognize that that's why you're going towards things like, you know, certain substances because you're not happy in what you're doing. Like, it's just sort of like, oh, I'm just like a social thing. You know, I'm a social drinker. I'm a social smoker. I'm a social eater. Or I'm a social coffee drinker. And then it's like, man, I, I can't not have coffee be by 10 because I have a headache. You know, well, that's not really just like yeah. recreational. So the reason that we kind of got to talking about it is I've had this battle, this struggle with PG Tips, which is my favorite English black tea. I take it with milk and sugar. I'm always plugging them in case they hear and want to be a sponsor. But it's like my crack. It And I know, I know that's not nice because there are people addicted to crack. But it's just the way to make someone understand immediately. It's not just like a pleasurable experience. It's not just like this ritual. It it's, it's I, in, I think it's about intense. it. I think about it. If I have it in the house, I think about the next time I can have it. Like, it's you know. so strong too. Like that shit, yeah. that shit fucks me up. And for like a half hour, I'm on top of the world after I've had that first like cup in the morning. What did your and friend then, call it? Were the, was it a, a British friend that called it a builder's tea it or was, something? No, it was like a Vanity Fair, one of those Vanity Fair segments that they do with celebrities. And it was James McAvoy and Emily Blunt. And they were talking about things from England, like English breakfast. And then they were comparing the teas and they were like, this tea is like a builder's tea. Like if you put your, you know, spoon in it, it'll stand up. And I was like, okay, mm. I, that's the first time I had heard it. But my friend who's a builder, Rick drinks, <laughs> maybe that should have been he my what? first clue. He drinks it. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of people, I think a lot of people, English people drink it, but like, but it's strong, it's very strong and I don't make it weak. And I, you know, my ex introduced me to it and I just ran with it. And when I pair, when I pair down a lot of other things, like I kind of gave up coffee for a minute, at least as my go-to every day, um, I went to the page and then it was like, I can't have it in the house and not drink it. And I can't just have like a cup a day. Like in my head, three cups a day became like my limit. Like I can't, because like I would get super dehydrated. I would get like UTIs. Um, it just like sucks the life out of you, but it's, it's amazing. And <laughs> so we were talking about it and Brandon was make you know, like asking me things or making these observations. And I'm like, okay, you don't, I don't know how to say this without sounding snobby or bitchy. You don't understand you know, and then we were just talking in the car today, heading out to the coast. And that was more coming out. It was just so interesting that like, you don't, you don't, I don't think you've had that. Like, what's the closest thing you've come to being addicted to something? Um, well, 
I mean, when I was younger, I did try meth. Did I know this about you? I think, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I told you. You probably did, and I just pushed it aside. I don't know if, I mean, it wasn't meth, it was it was speed, mm-hmm. which is basically meth that you snort, I, I guess. Difference. Okay. It was a long time ago, and I had just a little bit, and then soon after, I was like, I, I want more of this. Really? Yeah, and my friend was like... Like, how soon? Probably Sorry. the same day in the evening or uh-huh. something, and my friend was like, no, no. Like, you know, we know you should not. Your friend who had given you the speed? Mm Mm-hmm. Great. Well, I mean, at least he was responsible in that way. Yeah. But. Sheesh. But, you know, I've just, I've never really been addictive. I mean, I've Mm -hmm. smoked cigarettes before and I've drank before. I just don't. I weirdly just am able to give it up. Mm -hmm. And I thought it's maybe because I'm forgetful or I'm too lazy to be addicted to something. Yeah, and I kind of knocked that theory down because... I I, don't know, though. I'm still thinking that that might be part of it. But I feel like I can be really lazy about a lot of things, but if it involves... Too lazy to be an addict. I feel like if it it involves getting my quote-unquote fix of whatever, you know, like I get a sugar craving or something, I mean, I will will go out, I will be in my pajamas, and it'll be 10 o'clock at night, and I, in the past, you know, have gone out gotten dressed and gone out to get whatever it is you know what i mean um yeah or that's I will pretty just, crazy i will just you know kind I of i mean not crazy but yeah. that's 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 yeah. a serious that sounds as like a serious thing yeah because i i will let a lot of things go i am very capable of being lazy but you find ways to get your thing hmm. you know and make it happen like you can build your day around it you know kind of and 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 hide it and sneak it and you can builders tee your day around it. yes <laughs> so um i don't know i just thought it was funny because then when you said um i think that i think if i'm addicted to anything it's like deli sandwiches and that just tickled me because you do really love deli sandwiches but you can go days without having one and i think that's the difference yeah but that's probably my closest you know addiction and maybe diablo Mm-hmm. Video I remember games. you said you had to put away the Diablo DVD when I first met you because a disc, yeah. you would just um, while away the hours. Oh yeah, I played a lot of Diablo, <laughs> but but um, you were able to like put it away and go nope because that, if that's me and like PG Tips, so I quit PG Tips, <laughs> quote unquote, quit like a month you or two quit ago because the box <laughs> ran out no no that's before <laughs> because i think i was like getting utis i got like uti and they're super painful and horrible and uncomfortable and disruptive and i was like all right and then but the box was still in the house that was the problem mm. and if it's there if mm-hmm. it's close enough it's if it's within reach you're just thinking about it and at first you go this feels really good not drinking this stuff because it, it wires me out it dries, it dries me out. I know out. it's bad for me. I feel like it's wearing away the enamel of my teeth. Um, but you're And it's got to be fucking up your heart. Yeah. But then in your brain you go, oh, I'm having like a day where like, oh, I worked hard. Like you start thinking about it as a, it's a reward. It's a mm-hmm. comfort. It's, uh, you know, for a bad day, a good day, accomplishment, something. Uh, I need a boost. Any reason. And that's what they would tell us in FA. You had a good day. You had a great thing happen you want to reward yourself you had a bad day you had a hard conversation you want to give yourself discomfort i'm kind of tired you want to get you know any reason i'm kind of like that when we go for hikes or something yeah whenever we go for a hike afterwards Mm -hmm. i'm thinking you know we we would go get a burger or something and it like i feel i feel that reward but i'm never like tied to it but i I could always take it or leave it there's also something really nice about having a really vigorous like exercise thing, like walking on the beach, taking a hike and then eating because you're really hungry because you've burnt. So there's something about that too. Mm -hmm. And I know we did get sort of in a zone where we were like, we're going to go get like an Oliver's deli sandwich every time um, or a burger or, or just something as a reward. Those Oliver's deli sandwiches (laughs) were so good. Do you think they're better than the local place here? I don't know. I think they might be on the same level. Deli sandwiches are just... Because why are are you pining for all of our sandwiches when we have the farmhand down the street? Like it's... I think because maybe they had more ingredients or maybe Mm. they made them more stacked. I think they made them bigger. I fucking love deli sandwiches. You like adding the extra meat and it's like bursting. It's Mm -hmm. like bursting at the seams. Yeah. 
You should get one tomorrow. I was going to say we could get one, but I'll be in the office for my last week. But, Aww. um, but I, yeah, I don't think it's, I think that's a little different because it's the whole experience of like, we worked hard and maybe it's a little bit And now unhealthy. we're going to eat yeah. hard. <laughs> exactly. So you end up eating way more calories than you burned. But like, I kind of get it. And it's part of just our day out. Like my Monday's off, you know, we go do a thing and then we eat like cool food, you know? Yeah. Um, are you, have you had a lot of caffeine tonight? <clears throat> I did have a half a cup of coffee. Why do I feel a bit? You're a little zippy. Yeah. Well, um, we came back from the beach and we hadn't, like, we didn't walk super long and it was kind of cold and windy and we went in the water and it was cold and then we went and got pizzas, you know, so we were driving and, um, but man, I got so tired, um, like hit a wall so hard and we had like gone to the dump, but that wasn't super I think it's hard. because we were at the beach and it was fucking cold and the mm -hmm. water was freezing. So we we were walking out on the beach and had our feet in the water mm -hmm. and it was numbingly cold. I don't think it was that cold. My feet were fucking freezing. I couldn't really go in ankle deep or yeah. like calf deep without it being painful. Mm. Well, but like I tried to explain to you. It was a it was a tiredness on a level I haven't felt in a long time. Like I felt like I was coming down with something. I'm telling you, I think it's from that freezing cold water. I think it's partly that and the outing, and I think it's partly because all I had, caffeine wise, was a green tea, and a green tea oh, is that not. Could be. So I think it just hit me so hard, and then maybe worrying about going into the office. So I've been out of the office for basically over a year. It was in March, I guess, where when the shutdown happened mid to late March. And then, um, so I've been working from home this whole time. Now they're having people come back to the office. Well, then I gave my notice. So this is my last week, but I'm going back to the, into the office for four days starting tomorrow. Um, and, and then I'll be gone and then working a remote job again. <laughs> so it's a bit weird, but, um, I'm a little bit stressing about it. Like, oh, I have to get up a little earlier. I have to like prep clothes and I'm take a shower, you. do my hair. I'm Listen, telling you, no, just I'm not fucking... st I'm not stressing that much. My point is it just added to it, but I think it was I'm still kind of coming off of like a major caffeine, you know, three pages a day, basically. Three PG tips a day was where I was at. And then sometimes coffee and, you know, to like a green tea. And it oh, it hit me. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I was gonna have some other I don't know, like like now that I'm not drinking it, oh, because so then what I did is I slowly came back on the page, fell off the wagon slowly, one limb at a time, and then was back to three a day. And then I looked at the box and I said, okay, I'm going to just get to the end of this box. And then when I get to the end of this box, I'm not going to buy anymore. And then I'm going to see how that feels. <laughs> and I, I'm not saying that I have you know that i'm done with it or that i'll never have one again mm -hmm. but it's such a relief to not have it in the house because like i don't even have to think about it having it in the house you know it's like with chips and stuff those corn nuts are down there calling my damn name because i'm now want something else you know and um hmm. i mean i would definitely especially because you were worried about me and the you know the utis and stuff and like, so I would definitely like sometimes do it, not like hiding it from you, but like not trying to be super obvious about it because I, because there's a shame of like, I know this isn't good for me. I know I just tried to quit it like a month ago and now I'm having it again, you know, like sneaking ice cream out of the freezer or something like I've done that before too. Not with you, but you know, just like, oh yeah, like a shame have you ever, ever had that? Hmm. Sometimes with the pizzas. <laughs> sometimes I'll down a lot of pizza mm -hmm. and feel bad about it. But not like you feel like you have to hide it. Because no. you shouldn't ever have to do that. No. Yeah. I think because I also do this weird kind of natural fasting. Yeah. Where I just don't eat because mm -hmm. I'm not hungry. And I, just, I don't know if that's good or bad for my body but yeah. it just it just 
I do what feels natural. If I feel hungry, I'll eat a huge amount of food. Yeah. And if I don't, I just won't. Yeah, I think the other day I was like, I think you really need to eat something because it was like three o'clock. Yeah. And you were finalizing your animation or working mm -hmm. on that. And it was like three and you hadn't eaten. And I was like, holy shit. I don't think that's ever happened to me in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think you're just like a rare person who you kind of know who you are. And then if you drink or eat something that kind of doesn't agree with you, I don't know if like you recognize that that's not you and it doesn't make you feel good and you're just done with it. Um, whereas I think sometimes I'm still looking for that thing to help me be who I think I should be or I don't know. Well, I think you are still on the um, page train because you kind of need it for work. Mm -hmm. You know, you need it to keep up and be fast paced. I mean, when I was working at the tattoo shop, it was, I was having coffee and disgusting espressos and, mm -hmm. you know, staying awake with yerba mates and caffeine, you mm -hmm. know, just caffeine, just so I could stay like going because mm -hmm. otherwise I would be crashing or just, you know, not present the way they expected me to be yeah that. it's kind of an unnatural schedule like you can't kind of just go take a nap when maybe your body would say you need a break you need a nap or you, you can't know? just be like yourself you have yeah. to be like all smiles and all like mm -hmm. you know get into it like to mm -hmm. get at shit like right away and you just can't do that unless you're caffeinated mm -hmm. Well, and what kind of makes me nervous is I'm starting a new job in a couple of weeks and maybe like the road trip and everything will kind of get me like acclimated to like not having the caffeine and stuff. But when I was in F.A., I mean, it was three months of like, um, I don't remember what they called it. They didn't call it withdrawal, but that's kind of what it was like. And because m some people are getting off multiple things, some people come in and they are drinking alcohol and they're eating and, you know, whatever. And, or drinking coffee. Some people quit coffee, you know. And it's like, they said, treat yourself like you're recovering from a long illness. And it's like, that's why you get, like, your 90 days is to kind of get your your routine and your food plan under control and kind of get into a rhythm. And it's by no means a graduation, but you're so kind of tired and raw and sensitive. And it's like, I don't have that kind of time right now, you know. And I don't yeah. think I need that much time because I'm just really scaling back on the caffeine. But it's like you have to be super vigilant because, I don't know, it's just so... And, and then if I have to start a new job and feel like I have to be on and paying attention and getting trained, you know I'm going to be thinking, like, I need a little more caffeine. like. Yeah. Well, and especially because it's the <clears throat> start of a new job. Yeah. You have to, like, perform and you have to kind of prove yourself. Right. Whether you... Whether you really do or not, you you, feel like you, you have that internal expectation of like, mm -hmm. I better, you know, I better perform. Mm -hmm. I better make them happy so that I can, you know, get that vacation time, get that, you know, get the perks that I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's been a long time since I've been in a new job. So I definitely feel like I don't remember how this goes. I, you know, want them to be impressed with me. Because, like, maybe I'm going to want to ask for a modified schedule again in three months, kind of after that kind of probationary period. And, like, I need to be on. I need to be quick. And I have this thing on me of, you know, 16 years experience. I need to show that. So whether I need to actually step up as hard as I think I do, I might not. But there's that. There's pressure. Mm -hmm. Whether it's from me or others, you know. I think but. it's probably mostly internal. I think you're probably right. Anyway, we just wanted to talk about that and share our experiences because talking to basically a non-addictive type person and an addictive type person or someone who's developed addictive tendencies to feel more normal, that's me, it's like it's a habit now to be addicted to something, to feel okay, to feel... Mm normal to feel like I fit to make me more type A because I'm really not 
like, you know, just taking it easy this weekend, you know, doing some chores, but like when I felt it, not, not having this sort of grueling, not even, not even like it's a grueling, but just being on someone else's schedule and doing something maybe that doesn't really feed your soul, you know, like, and not being able to just go, okay, I'm, I'm done with that. Mm -hmm. And like just transition over to what you really want to do and, and be making the same money at it and being comfortable. Yeah. It like drives you to, you know, look for crutches to help just function. Yeah. Function at that level. Well, and unfortunately, I think a lot of people are in this type of situation because a lot of businesses love to run with skeleton crews. Mm -hmm. So they don't have enough employees mm -hmm. to handle the job. So they have, you know, for example, one person doing like two or three people's jobs. Mm -hmm. And they're not, they're pay doesn't usually represent you know yeah represent that but they are expected to do it to do it anyway because that job is sought after or whatever kind of bullshit yeah you know so yeah it's like expected well and i'm hoping that where i go next um i mean it sounds like there's more resources so maybe i won't have to be worrying about i hope not whether this person's doing their job and it impacts me um, you know, maybe there'll be more, a little more involvement and oversight from the attorneys on that. And I can just sort of be a little more focused on my area and mm -hmm. like kind of more stay in my own lane. That's how jobs should be. <clears throat> yeah. But you, you know should be should assigned to a job and you do it, <clears throat> but it's anywhere I've ever worked. It's always, Oh, can you do these 10 other things? It's yeah. Like, if you're that fuck? type of person, you definitely get leaned on. Yeah. And so it's kind of nice to start somewhere new where maybe I can reinvent myself a little bit. I mean, I've gotten better over the years at being like, I'm setting it's boundaries too much, you know, it's hard though, it especially is hard. It, it like so often comes back to you, you know, especially if you come from, you know, a typical kind of American parent that's like hard work, you know, mm -hmm. what am I saying? Um, Hard work pays off or whatever kind of or, yeah. stuff that's not or, even or really true anymore. Or the unspoken message of like, you're not worthy if you're not working hard and being kind of miserable, maybe. Yeah. Or being loyal to the company or whatever. My dad once told me, um, uh, you're not supposed to like it. It's work. Mm hmm I think he's told me that. But it's... <laughs> but yeah. you're not sure, so it could be slander. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure he said that. I don't remember, mm -hmm. I don't remember if I was complaining about a thing or, or what, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's that type of attitude where it's like, you should be miserable. And it's like, yeah. but do you not see the like CEOs and the heads of these companies that are just like fucking exploiting their, their workers and exploiting you mm -hmm. and here you are like sweating your ass off and breaking your back and it's like yeah why? you should just put why? up with that like what the fuck yeah, kind when, of attitude when did we is get that? that yeah it's such a subservient fucking bullshit attitude it's to a have washed attitude yeah well and i feel like he's aware that it's like cynical but i mean you fought that um you've been fighting that but you know kind of against the current um and I, it's taken me a long time to realize, I think watching you do your art made me yearn for something else. Um, but it's hard. And if you then have to start over in whatever area, it's, it's very attractive to just be like, I'm just going to stick this out until retirement because I'm on a path. I'm on a track. Mm -hmm. I'm earning a certain level. I'm going to earn this amount. Yeah. It's, you it's, know. it's the golden handcuffs. Mm-hmm. You're, you're comfortable enough, but you're not necessarily happy. Yeah. I think Emmanuel told me about that. Mm -hmm. And he, I guess, has them. He's like, yeah, I'm comfortable, but I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. It's those golden handcuffs. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're working <laughs> towards it. <laughs> and just, you know, uh, getting to know your own habits and why you do certain things and what people have told you, I think what my life coach calls like the world wisdom, 
or the world's wisdom, like it doesn't mean that you have to do it. It doesn't mean that it's right for you, you know, doing the smart thing and sticking with a job. And, um, if it makes you miserable, like you don't have to do that. You don't have to believe that you can't make a shitload of money doing something you love. Mm -hmm. You don't have to buy into that. So breaking old habits, shifting old paradigms, like it's, um, hard, but we're working on it. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's nice to have a partner who like wants you to be happy and wants you to be healthy. And, you know, my prior partner was more worried to think about his happiness and, you know, would say things like, oh, you should quit violin because it's 40 bucks a week. And it was like, but I enjoy it. And <laughs> I have you, a great teacher. And you were paying for it. I you were the for one it. paying for it. But it was like, <laughs> oh, this money, I guess in his head, this is money that could go towards stuff I want to do. Or, you know, yet yeah. on the other hand, he wanted to go back to school and just work part time. And it was like, well, but you want me to quit violin? Like so much was learned from yeah. that, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, uh. That's a narcissistic personality. That's kind of a jerk thing to do. Yeah. But so it's nice to um, be on this journey with you. Likewise. It's still hard work. It is. Yeah. There's still always paperwork, as Brandon says. Oh, I fucking hate paperwork. <laughs> paperwork the, that started with schoolwork. That's like the, that's like my <laughs> opposite of addiction. That is something that I hate so much. I hate paperwork more than I think anything. And paperwork for Brandon means, yeah, like school, doing, school doing work, taxes, DMV papers, taxes, mail, like all of that. Any kind of administrative bu bureaucracy <laughs> fucking bullshit. Uh -huh. God, it makes me furious. And then that's when, why you haven't sent off your passport application yet. And mine's already come back. No, that's fine. <laughs> when there are speed bumps in it. Mm. that's when i start yeah. to yeah. like i'm fine with okay i'll do my taxes whatever i'll give my money to them or their mm -hmm. money as they see it right whatever but then when there are speed bumps like oh this didn't this you know do you have the exact date that you got this 20 years yeah. ago it's like i want to strangle someone till mm -hmm. they die that's that's where I get. Mm, I know. That's I where I it. immediately I saw it because you <laughs> I got jump stuck from on like that. I jump from like okay I'm doing this paperwork to like I want to kill everyone around me with Shit. paperwork. I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't I aware how close I came to death. I won't kill you, but that you know that's God. It makes me so fucking mad. Mm. I don't I don't know why, but it like triggers a thing in my brain. Interesting. That yeah. sounds like a core wound to me. Well, I mean, when I was. When I was in school, I fucking hated school. Mm. I hated school so much. I would I would just sometimes go into a rage and just start stabbing my books. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not healthy. I know. But like, it's this sort of like, just forcing a person to do something that they just hate more than anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We should watch the Hey Dimmu podcast because I think one of their recent episodes was like schools are a mistake. Schools are an enormous mistake. <laughs> I know some of the actually I know a decent amount of the teachers are trying. Yeah. And I respect that. But the fucking paperwork. God, it's awful. It's called homework or schoolwork. It's just funny how you can't just, it's just funny when you just labeled it all paperwork. It's just it's just I had never heard it put that way. It's it's accurate. But it's just funny that like from your childhood to your adult life, it's just all paperwork. I hate it. It is paperwork. It's just funny. <laughs> I mean, anything where you have to read, read shit, mm -hmm. write shit down, you know. Read shit and write shit down. Yeah. That's school in a nutshell. That you, shit that you don't <laughs> fucking care about it's, at all. It's back to trying to fit. Are we the square, square peg or the round peg? Doesn't matter. Into the opposite Either one. hole. You know. It kills your soul a little bit. And I, I shut down and you apparently rage and stab things. So, you know, you probably should never have been in a school, in a in a standard um, academic school. You should have been in an art school or, well, don't you know, a school where you play. I think they have them now more, I think, where you, you know, there's more play like um, outside. And yeah, you do art and 
you know, like that's just you're you have a different kind of brain. I mean, I think it would be good if there were just schools that were more um, uh, had more like direction for the children, Mm -hmm. you know, like take the individual child and be like, what, what, you know, what do you want to learn? Mm -hmm. Because guess what? That's what they're going to fucking learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get it. Obviously, teach them basic math and basic English, basic shit. But it sounds like you hated that so much. So is it really necessary? (laughs) I was kind. I think I was kind of fine with it up until high school. Yeah. But then once it's like, I really liked math until like economy. High school, you know, junior junior high maybe. Yeah, and just the the higher level stuff where it's Mm -hmm. like I don't give a fuck about any of this. I know I'm I'm, so shut down by it, and you know you're not going to use it. I know I'm not going to use, yeah, you know, algebra, ever. Never, ever. Not in my line of work that I have planned for myself. Mm -hmm. And it's obvious to me at that age Mm -hmm. that I'm not going to be a fucking scientist Mm -hmm. or something. Somebody that needs to know, you know, algebra or any of those type of things. And it's like you aren't well rounding the students. You're just wasting their lives away when Mm -hmm. you could be doing focused studies on something they want to learn, something that they will absorb easier because mm-hmm. they actually give a crap about it mm-hmm. that's that's my opinion <laughs> <laughs> one man's opinion mm-hmm. okay well i want to get your blood pressure back down so we could wrap it up if you want well uh, sorry just circle back it's okay and i think that it's it's either you know it's obvious and also probably proven that if you have interest in a thing you're going to learn it a lot faster mm-hmm yeah so yeah it's just so it's just so backwards it's just that forcing they're really getting you getting the kids into it early of like forcing them this is what adulting is gonna be like yeah yeah we're forcing you into you know the peg hole Mm -hmm. so yeah i'm sorry it's a good episode All right. Well, uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments or leave us a rate review. Um, yeah, like, sorry we went off YouTube. the rails. We were supposed What's to be talking shit? about. <laughs> sorry kidding. you went off the rails. We were supposed to be talking about um, <laughs> addictions. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, we hope you we thought we'd just I don't know. It seemed like an interesting thing that we were observing as I was going through my page withdrawal or separation. And um, we hope you enjoyed it. And if not, I don't know. Move on. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.